Good evening and welcome to the 40 Days for Life webinar, which we are calling Safe, because we are going to talk about the over 14,000 babies that have been saved from a 40 Days for Life campaign. You're also going to hear from some of the heroes of 40 Days for Life, the local campaign workers, and you will get very inspired by our good friend, Governor Mike Huckabee, who wants to share a very powerful message with all of you joining us uh, tonight. We're also going to talk about why the disconnect of the abortion industry with you and where you live is at an all-time high now more than ever. And so as we get started, I am joined tonight uh, by Steve Carlin, who's the campaign director for North America. Steve first got involved by leading campaigns in Wisconsin, where it is not spring right now. It is very much winter. Steve, how are you? I'm doing great, Sean, and I couldn't be more excited to really celebrate God's blessings this campaign. We've seen fruits born all around North America and all around the world, and what a gift it is that we can come together tonight with all of you to celebrate those blessings. Yeah, we are going to talk about weather a lot tonight. We're calling it the spring campaign, but it was the largest one we've ever had, 354 cities, and it was anything uh, but spring. It seemed like winter, even tonight, just still will not leave in many parts of the country. Uh, but it was spring in Mexico, where uh, Lourdes Varela, who is the Latin American Outreach Coordinator for 40 Days for Life, lives. Lourdes, how are you? I'm great, and I, it's wonderful being here uh, to celebrate life and everything. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of good stuff to share, and we want you to be part of it tonight. You can join us on the chat on this webinar. We have a poll asking you if you experienced any persecution during 40 Days for Life. We'll also ask you how you followed along with the campaign, so be sure you get on there, you fill out the poll, and then ask us questions. We'll be responding when we can uh, throughout the rest of the evening, uh, so be sure that you interact with us. Uh, but tonight, with everything that's at stake uh, here in the United States and around the world, as we in our country just uh, passed 60 million abortions in the United States, we are going to start tonight with an opening word of prayer uh, led by Steve. Lord, we thank you so very much for the fruits that we've seen this 40 Days for Life campaign, the lives that have been saved, the abortion facilities that have been closed, and the workers who have left their jobs. And we thank you for all of the local leaders, participants, and supporters who have made this work possible, those who have said yes to your call. And we ask you, Lord, to just continue to sustain and prosper this work that we may continue to see the world transformed through your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And 2018 has been a very busy year. We started the year at, at both marches, the March for Life in Washington, D.C., and then the West Coast Walk for Life in San Francisco. And for those of you that either joined us at one of those events or, or watched it on, on television, on EWTN, uh, you saw that we presented the first ever 4040 scholarship, a $4,040 scholarship that we launched last summer to college students who are courageously doing more in the pro-life movement. And this scholarship uh, was funded by the father of one of our old volunteers, Susie Calvey, who participated in the first ever 40 Days for Life campaign that took place outside this building. Uh, we are sitting in the former boardroom of a Planned Parenthood abortion facility and uh, Susie Calvey used to sidewalk counsel and pray during that first campaign and she passed away due to cancer and her dad was so inspired when he learned that 40 Days for Life was starting this 4040 scholarship that he donated uh, the, the scholarship and so we were honored to give that away on the stage at the West Coast Walk for Life in San Francisco with 60,000 of our closest uh, friends out in California and we gave that scholarship uh, to Katie Syme of the University of Nebraska. And you can see the photos. It was just a wonderful, wonderful day. And she represents what you represent during a 40 Days for Life campaign, which is that willingness and that courage to go out and to pray in front of an abortion facility. And right now, Steve, we see the disconnect of Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry at an all-time high as early as it was this last week. We saw Planned Parenthood tweet out that we need a Disney princess that has had an abortion. That's mean. That's mean because <laughs> it's against littles. I remember when I was a child, I learned every dialogue of, the, of every movie of Disney. And you repeat it and repeat it and you want to be like a princess. And now showing a princess have an abortion. 
what kind of mean mind can do that to, the, to a little? It reflects where they are. I mean, you know, we, we highlight, we're showing the tweet on the, on the webinar, uh, but they, they cannot help themselves. And everything comes back uh, to abortion. It shows not just their disconnect, but their complete loss of innocence. And that loss is required. Uh, when you're doing abortions every single day. And, but Steve, it, it, it's the complete opposite of what we see at the real level of America, not on Twitter, but at the local level where the abortions happen. Yeah, it's an absurd thing because we always talk about nobody grows up wanting to have an abortion. Nobody is happy when they show up at the abortion facility. It's a miserable day. The women are miserable as they walk in, and they're no happier when they walk out having had the abortion. The only time we see someone smiling at an abortion facility are those who choose life because of the prayerful presence that's on hand. And so you're absolutely right. This doesn't resonate with their customers. It doesn't resonate with even people who would describe themselves as pro-choice. It's just frankly insane. Yeah, and we, we see that disconnect with the moms who are actually going in. They don't, they don't care about their Disney tweets and all of this. They're um, not there because they're adamantly pro-choice. They're there because they're having a crisis. Yeah, yeah. and, and you know, we, you're going to get later to the, all the abortion facilities that, that have closed during a 40 Days for Life campaign. We're standing in one of them that closed in 2013. But nobody's thinking about that when they go in and, and they have an abortion uh, Steve's right. You see the joy when they turn around. And we want to give you a, an example of that uh, from this wonderful mom who, who stopped and thanked people for being out at the 40 Days for Life campaign. I want you to watch this, uh, this short testimonial of this mom that chose life and then thanked the people for being out. This is in Montgomery, Alabama. And I came. I set the appointment. I, I came. And if I was telling these gentlemen as I began to fill out my paperwork, I just, something just literally physically stirred inside of me. Like, I can't even explain it. And it was like almost like a lifetime movie because I just burst through the door. They probably thought I was crazy in there because the other girls were still filling out their paperwork and I'm crying. My sheets of paper is getting wet on the clip and I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is not my baby's fault. Like, Anybody, you know, like I was telling them, sometimes you're young and your friends are coming off the stops into your head, what you think you're doing is a quick escape. But I couldn't imagine life without my sister. Amen. Hey, he just was a perfect <laughs> child, and I just think that, that it was, was he just God's blessing, it was God's it blessing for honoring that. And these women, I don't think they have any idea because the mental is so much more afterwards. I used to do psychology, so I just, I'm glad. I'm so glad. What is so beautiful about that footage is that as she's recording this and, and sharing uh, her testimony of her son, Sam, who is alive today because people were out there, she herself reached out to a mom on that same day that was going in, who was going in to have an abortion and helped talk this mom out of it and saved a life herself just because she stopped. And it just shows the beauty of presence and being out there. It's such a grace when we see how God puts exactly the right person in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. We had a campaign just outside of Los Angeles, Lawndale, California, where there was a woman who was going in because she and her husband had four children, didn't know how they were going to take care of number five, stressed out of their minds, and it turns out that the sidewalk counselor, the prayer warrior on hand that day was a mother of five children who had baby number five right there with her. That's all it took is someone to say, you can do it, I did it, we're going to be there with you. They exchanged contact information they chose life but sometimes it's just the Lord calls the right people at that exact moment where they are most desperately needed and the Lord uses those people and and that's that's how children are alive you know Steve mentioned nobody grows up wanting an abortion and nobody grows up wanting to work in the abortion industry and yet uh, we see from that mom in Alabama that peaceful prayerful witness uh, can literally save a life and that's the theme of tonight 14 thousand saves. And Steve, we've mentioned that there were more cities than ever this spring, 354 cities. It was cold. Share some of the victories, share some of the milestones that came from this spring campaign. Absolutely. The victories were abundant in spite of the weather. We've had a campaign in El Paso, Texas, which 
reported that there were volunteers out as part of their Unbroken Chain initiative, where they wanted to have every single hour of prayer covered, and that meant that there were people out in pouring rain. And as we always say, there's more lives saved in bad weather, whether it's cold weather or whether it's rainy weather. There was a woman who drove five hours, 300 miles to come to El Paso Mm. for an abortion until she saw people on their knees in the pouring rain. And that was a sign she was looking for. That was a sign that she needed. I love these individual stories because when we talk about lives saved, sometimes a number, a statistic, 14,000 that we've talked about, that's a great number. At the same time, we lose track if we're not careful that each one of those 14,000 plus lives saved is a story. It's a baby. It's a mother. It's a father. And so I love to hear about you know those folks envisioning them out on their knees praying for an end to abortion. Just as we talk about how nobody wants to to get an abortion, nobody grows up wanting an abortion. We also know that nobody grows up wanting to work in the abortion industry. It's sometimes just a last gasp or an accidental thing that, you know, life heads in the wrong direction. We've also now know of 172 abortion workers who've experienced conversion, left their jobs, and begun to walk with Christ through the 40 Days for Life campaign. We never share their locations. We want to really protect their identity and and prevent them from being subject to any reprisals at the hands of their former employers. But one of the abortion workers, the clinic director actually, struck up a friendship with the sidewalk volunteers. And they exchanged phone numbers, and they exchanged text messages, and over time, This relationship grew, and the abortion worker sent a text message back to the 40 Days for Life volunteer that said, after seeing you all out here day after day, I've come to really believe that there is good in the world, but I know it's not here where I'm working. So she left her job. Mm. One of the clinic escorts of that facility left her job as well. We saw an international worker leave the job in the abortion industry, so 172 now. And then another great number, the number that everyone who signs up to lead a 40 Days for Life campaign looks forward to, is we now know of 96 different abortion facilities that have closed their doors and gone out of business once and for all. Number 95 was in Sharonville, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati, the abortion facility run by the notorious Dr. Martin Haskell, who claims to have invented the gruesome partial birth abortion procedure. His facility outside of Cincinnati closed. Number 96, which Lords will talk about in just a little bit, uh, is in Iztapalapa, Mexico City, Mexico. It took me about three years to learn how to say Iztapalapa, (laughs) and I had the chance to meet Lourdes actually at that facility about three years ago. Uh, But that center is now closed, so we're seeing closures all around the world. God's grace is not restricted by any national boundaries, not by any political divisions. Uh, We've got uh, the grace is flowing incredibly abundantly. And so we want to take you out to some of these local sites. And I'm going to send it now to Lisa in Glendale, Arizona. Lisa has faithfully led campaigns in the greater Phoenix area for quite a while. But Lisa has really inspired the whole 40 Days for Life world with her triumph over adversity this campaign. My name is Lisa Blevins. I am currently the Glendale, Arizona 40 Days for Life campaign director. Things were going great during our 2018 spring campaign. We had five known saves, and our local pregnancy center was busy helping clients that were turning away from the Glendale Planned Parenthood. It was a Saturday, and I was preparing to meet a large group of prayer warriors that were traveling from the Northern Valley to be part of our midpoint rally. Then all of a sudden, I received a phone call from my doctor telling me that I had to go immediately to the hospital and that I'd be there for at least three to five days. I asked my doctor if this could wait one more day, but he said no because he was concerned about my symptoms and my recent MRI of the brain and the spine. So off we went, my family in tow. By the time evening rolled around, the verdict was in. You have MS, multiple sclerosis. This caused a temporary setback in our Glendale campaign, but God is good. I was sidelined for a few weeks, but the Glendale Prayer Warriors and our local pregnancy center kept marching on, adding five, no, six more saves and two turnaways. Meanwhile, I was in the hospital thinking, Lord, I am not finished with fighting the good fight. And if it should be his will, please allow me to continue on. 
In fact, after my diagnosis, I felt more like fighting for life than I ever have before. What a blessing it is to be part of the 40 Days for Life team. May God bless you and grant you peace. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Our whole team is going to continue to keep you in our prayers, and I know the whole 40 Days for Life world will as well. Uh, Steve, Lourdes, let's talk about weather. We've made a lot of jokes, but there were blizzards across uh, the country. It's very cold. Steve mentioned we do see more babies saved from abortion the more miserable the weather is. Uh, because even the women and certainly the workers, have, as the days pass, they see the commitment of, of being out there. You know, Ash Wednesday was February the 14th, which feels like it was like eight months ago. But it was extremely cold. The cold never went away. But we saw more people go out than ever before. We did. And it, it's cold is a thing, but rain is also a thing. We saw Southern California, which has been under drought conditions for, I think, about the last decade. <laughs> it rained constantly during that campaign. That story I told earlier about the mother of five who was able to talk the other woman out of aborting her fifth baby, that took place in a rainstorm. And I got a great email from Bob in Downers Grove, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And Bob said that in late February, it was actually unseasonably warm in the Chicago area. And he said, normally that would be very welcome. But he said, when combined with a still mostly frozen ground, winds and heavy rain, the vigil site became just a swamp of mud and cold water. And so they had a situation where he's like, how am I gonna fill my vigil schedule this day? We still have a couple of openings. I don't think anyone's gonna answer the call. He sounded the alarm and he said, you know, we needed one more hour filled and our volunteers came through. Not one, not two, but 12 volunteers went out to pray in that cold, semi-frozen water. Bob in Downers Grove has had kind of an odd situation the last year as there were some pro-abortion supporters who would come out and just create a circus. I went out and I visited and it was just, just a mess. I said, Bob, I'm guessing that those folks aren't showing up to give you a hard time on that particular day. He said, no, we haven't seen them the whole campaign. It's too cold out here. <laughs> it's too yeah, wet. It's, it's too cold for a lot of the crazy people that come out and the anarchists. They don't really like uh, uh, cold weather. But, you know, it was interesting to see as, as the cold weather just was relentless. It just kept going in many parts of the country. It wasn't a deterrent, as you mentioned. And it's really a reflection that 40 Days for Life is a challenge. Uh, to go out. You know, it's, it's hard. Uh, 25% of the 750,000 people who have participate, participated in 40 Days for Life, this is their first pro-life activity, which I am always surprised at, particularly during a Lent campaign, a spring campaign, when it is so cold. And it's because it's a challenge. And we have seen no other part of the world uh, more than Latin America reached that challenge. You know, 40 Days for Life has now been done in nearly 50 countries around the world. We never imagined it would ever leave Texas. And we did the first campaign right out there on the sidewalk in front of this building in 2004. Uh, but it has spread uh, around the world. And America, Lourdes, has done a lot to export abortion. And thank God, you know, we saw uh, this uh, president, President Trump and this administration defund Planned Parenthood International through the UN that impacted uh, countries in Latin America and Africa. But we have exported abortion uh, to a lot of countries around the world. But in turn, so many of these countries have then looked to the United States for the solution to abortion, whether it be a pregnancy resource center or a 40 Days for Life campaign. And Lord, as you have seen firsthand, as you brought 40 Days for Life to Mexico many years ago and now help all the Latin American countries, you've seen that joyful response from people who love children and love family. The abortion industry is haunting every country and every mind. The first time I hear about um, depenalizing abortion, I thought that will never happen in Mexico. We are a country that loves family and babies. But it happened. Uh, in Mexico City, uh, the abortion was depenalized in 2007. So uh, I knew about 40 Days for Life. Uh, we we started 40 Days for Life in 2014. And uh, the first campaign, w campaign we saw uh, a lot of miracles. 3,000 people participate. Uh, and not just that, we saw many lives saved. And now, 
that we are uh, in the eight campaign. Uh, seven campaigns, so 40 Days for Life, were placed in Iztapalapa, where what Steve sets, and the abortion clinic closed. And it was uh, a miracle because it, it, Iztapalapa was uh, a, a town that is really crowded. Uh, there are a lot of people and uh, the abortion uh, industry found a place to um, establish a, 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 control, a, a contraceptive control uh, with abortion and with other contra contraceptive methods. People kept uh, praying the rosary and then so how the, the, the crew took the signs and furniture and everything to a truck. So it was something amazing. Uh, the, uh, actually, the closure event was uh, there, uh, out of the ex-abortion center. And uh, after that, uh, there was a mass to celebrate the, the closure. And when we were at the mass, uh, the um, security guard, the new security guard, asked the priest to bless the place the building so we got into that abortion center now empty and we saw all, all, uh, all the rooms and everything it, it was sad but at the same time it's a joy that now it's close and no more deaths will be will prevail there and we really believe that God already won so there is just or yes. It sometimes seems to be like a really tough to have a, a vigil to be there 24 hours or 12 hours. Seems to be impossible. But you can handle if you trust God. And Lourdes, you've traveled a lot to other 40 Days for Life locations throughout Latin America. You just got back from Argentina. We did a Columbia conference that was sponsored by a donor in Texas who saw the growth of 40 Days for Life in Latin America. We were in Colombia in November. And it's just great to see the joyful response to not accepting abortion, no matter what country you live in, but going out and doing something about it. And you've done a great job. We've seen so much out of Mexico and, and all of uh, South America. And it's just beautiful to see 40 Days for Life spread to so many places. And God used the simple effort of prayer and fasting to combat evil. And this really is what we're fighting is evil. Lord, as when you talked about going into that closed abortion facility in Iztapalapa, which is a great name to say, especially when you're talking about a closed abortion facility there. You know, we have the same thing here in this, in this closed abortion facility. Robert in England, who we're about to hear from, went into their closed abortion facility in London. And the presence of evil is real. This is the most barbaric act that happens in our world today is an abortion. You just would not wish it on your greatest enemy. And the places where it happens... Uh, that's where you really feel the evil, which is why when you go out and you pray at a 40 Days for Life campaign, prayer and fasting is, is not just suggested, it is required because of what uh, you are opposing and what you are facing when you go out there. And so I want to invite Robert on now, who's in uh, London, England. Robert, led, Robert brought 40 Days for Life to the United Kingdom in the fall of 2010, and he has helped spread 40 Days for Life throughout uh, the world and thank God uh, for him doing that and so Robert welcome to the webinar and what a campaign we've had during Lent 2018 uh, incredible stories of babies saved we've had so many um, new cities and countries involved in the largest campaign ever I am live outside St Albans Cathedral it's the oldest place of Christian worship in the United Kingdom. The third century Saint St Alban uh, gave his life for the faith and is commemorated here. This building behind me uh, goes back uh, 1700 years old. How beautiful it is to live in a country with such history and culture oozing at every corner. Well, one of the most prominent things uh, this campaign during 40 Days for Life was the weather. Uh, we had some of the coldest weather on record during a campaign. 
the beast from the east phenomenon was all over Eastern Europe. That meant that uh, our leader in Falkirk, Scotland, George Taylor, was praying in 16 inches of snow, keeping his vigil going. And in Romania, the volunteers said that it was minus 17 degrees Celsius. That's zero degrees Fahrenheit. They instinctively came to the vigil and said, this is our mission, we must keep it going. And in Glasgow in Scotland, they were praying in a yellow weather warning, digging out their vigil site in order to keep the vigil going. Well, right on the other side of the world, a stalwart volunteer Bob in Perth, Australia, was praying in 42 degrees Celsius and that's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in for five hours a day. Uh, what heroic witness from Bob. Thank you, for Bob, from Perth. Well, we have heard so many grace-filled stories of babies saved from around the world. Um, in Bournemouth in the United Kingdom, a woman who was 20 weeks pregnant um, chose life for her unborn child after speaking with the volunteers. Not only that, she said that uh, she wanted to be baptised with her family also, having had a discussion Gracefield conversation with the volunteers. In Birmingham, the United Kingdom, a lady walked out of the abortion centre and she realised uh, she fell over, she collapsed, and the volunteers called an ambulance for her. The abortion staff were more concerned with the reputation of Mary Stokes rather than the well being of that woman. But because the volunteers were there, they were able to order her a uh, uh, an ambulance and they also saw four babies saved during that campaign too. In Lisbon, in Portugal, a woman was looking for a doctor who was considering abortion. The volunteers found her a doctor. Subsequently, she chose life for her baby. I traveled to Spain and to Scotland also. We had a story of a baby saved in Seville. Uh, they were a new first time campaign. They were very good at reaching out and offering alternatives to the women outside the abortion center. So I'm in awe of what God is doing during this campaign. We've had many graceful blessings, uh, many beautiful encounters. Uh, I'm looking forward to extraordinary growth on the international side and looking forward to what God has in store later on this year. God bless you. Well, thanks to Robert for his courageous leadership. He has traveled to so many different places and he does so with joy. And so he's, he is the most American Brit we know. We can definitely <laughs> say that about Robert. And so, But he is just fantastic. Uh, leader. So thank you, Robert. We now get to hear from uh, a good friend who has seen 40 Days for Life grow uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we had Governor Mike Huckabee speak at the 40 Days for Life dinner in 2009, just two years after we launched 40 Days for Life as a nationally coordinated effort. He has always been a huge advocate for the unborn. Those of you who have been doing pro-life work uh, for years, longer than Steve and I have been alive, um, you know that Governor Mike Huckabee has been such a strong voice uh, for women and for the unborn. And he had some very uh, inspiring words as he has seen the campaign just grow. We had our largest fall campaign we've ever had last fall, largest spring campaign this spring. And he wanted to share a real heartfelt message to encourage you as we go out and tackle the rest of 2018 and take more steps closer uh, to making our communities abortion free. Governor Huckabee, welcome. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this important webcast. There is so much momentum right now in the pro-life movement and some of you like me have been doing this for a long time and this is encouraging to see. I've seen 40 days for life grow over these past 11 years and I'm in awe of how God is using this peaceful and prayerful effort and using you. We live in a great country where we have the rights to not tuck our faith away, but to live it right out in the public square and in the darkest parts of our culture. As Americans, we can use our rights that many are fighting for all over the world as we gather on this event, and we can offer hope to a woman considering abortion, to offer love and compassion to them after the abortion, if they go through with it, and then offer love to those who work in the abortion industry. I wanna thank Sean and the entire 40 Days for Life team 40 Days for Life has become an example to many communities on how to offer hope, compassion, and love to those who feel that their only hope is an abortion. It's because this effort is built on prayer and it focuses at the most important level in America, the local level. This is where abortions take place and that's where hearts and minds are being changed. Please know that your efforts and your support, when it's cold, raining, or hot, 
don't go unnoticed. We know this because of the thousands of babies who are alive today. We know this because of the abortion facilities that have closed, including the one where 40 Days for Life started in College Station, Texas. And we know this because of the workers who are having a change of heart and leaving the abortion business. We know that your prayers are not unanswered. 40 Days for Life is not always easy, but it's worth it. Thank you for having me tonight. And may God continue to bless 40 Days for Life and bless this great country that is not only saving lives in America, but inspiring the world to do the same. Keep up the great work and God bless. Thank you, Governor Huckabee. And we've certainly seen uh, the reports of the babies that are saved and, and what can happen when we use our rights, when we overcome our discomforts and when we trust God and we go out in the public right away and, and we pray. And Steve, we've seen now over 14,000 babies saved. We've seen 96 abortion, facility, uh, abortion facilities close and go out of business. And we've seen 172 uh, abortion facility workers have a change of heart. It really is about hearts and minds at the local level. You know, we have our foot on the gas. We've, we've had more countries, more cities, more people wanting to get involved with 40 Days for Life than ever before. We can't control the weather. Uh, we have learned over the last few months for sure we can't do that. And there's just a lot going on. And that's one of the reasons after each campaign we like to have these webinars and report on all of the success and the beautiful results that uh, 40 Days for Life is seeing God work. And that is through a very special group of people. And those are local 40 Days for Life campaign leaders. Leading a 40 Days for Life campaign is hard. The three of us have all done it. Not one of them has been easy. And as we train uh, local leaders, as we recruit uh, new leaders, it, it is a vast group of people. We have pastors. We have retired Marine colonels. We have um, stay-at-home moms, we have college students, we've had everybody, Catholics, Protestants, we've had a few uh, Jewish men lead campaigns. We've had so many people sacrifice so much and that's one of the reasons the last two years we've really poured more into training local leaders and also more into our technology. You know, years ago the ACLU said that uh, 40 Days for Life was the greatest threat to choice because of the way we use technology at the local level. The only time I ever agreed with the ACLU uh, because it really levels the playing field. The, we have what the abortion industry does not have, which is momentum at the local level. There are not local reproductive rights march where people go out in the streets and, and hold fundraisers in the streets for their local abortion facility. And yet the pro-life movement through 40 Days for Life spreading across the country, we now see pregnancy resource centers outnumber abortion providers three to one. We are not necessarily getting everything that we want in Washington, D.C. Planned Parenthood is still receiving $500 million of tax funding, but we're seeing a lot of good in D.C., but we're seeing all the momentum at the local level. And it's because of what you're doing. And the abortion industry simply does not have that. And so tonight is one of the rare nights where we are asking for your financial support. 40 Days for Life does not get government funding from tax dollars. That may be surprising to some of you. We have always been funded uh, by you, uh, by the participants. And tonight, you know, during a campaign, we don't ask our email list for uh, donations. We keep it focused. Uh, on the campaign, but now that the campaign is over, we are doing a matching challenge. And we've had a handful of donors, and these are donors who, they don't have a distant relationship with 40 Days for Life. They participate in their local campaign, and they put together a matching challenge uh, to challenge you uh, to give over the next seven days. And so any dollar that you give up to this amount on your screen, you look on the screen, every dollar up to that amount will be matched dollar for dollar if given uh, by the end of April 17th. And so you have a one week, it ends on tax day for better or for worse, you have one week uh, to hit that match. And I really encourage you uh, to stretch yourself and to give what you can and have your donation doubled, all gifts uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. All of your gifts are tax deductible and they go directly to the front lines. These stories that you've heard, this, this growth, it, it, it is all great and it is all worth it. And we pour a lot of work into the campaign and we hit the ground running 
Dirt in between campaigns is our busiest time as an organization. We spend a lot of time, uh, but it is only worth it if prayer is at the center of this. And these over 14,000 babies that have been saved, these workers who are, who are having a change of heart after spending some of them decades in the abortion industry, that is only the result of a conversion of heart. That is only the result of the grace of God in them actually seeing the mercy of Christ in you when you're out at your local vigil. And that is the most powerful weapon uh, we have. And so I encourage you to give tonight so we can get more people out to the sidewalks praying so that we can get more people uh, leading campaigns and provide more resources. We're going to do and spend more in the fall on our local leaders and local campaigns in 2018 than we ever have before. And so I encourage you to give. We are very blessed as an organization that we only spend 4% of our resources. You see the graph on the screen, 4% of our resources on fundraising, and we want to keep it that way. We ask our email list money for money twice a year, and then you know it's coming. It's after the fall campaign and it's after the spring campaign, and that allows us to focus on our mission, frankly, and not run around and try to raise money and, and, and constantly be seeking uh, after donors. Uh, when you provide for these matches, it helps us focus on our mission. And so I want to encourage you on the screen, you'll see the two options. You can give a one-time gift or you can give a monthly gift. And I really want to thank our monthly donors because that allows us to know what's coming in, whether we have a guy that gives us a dollar a month. I mean, whatever you can give, it, it lets us know what's coming in so that, again, we don't have to focus on fundraising. We can focus on our mission, which needs a lot of attention right now because it's growing by the grace of God. And so thank you to those monthly donors. Tonight's the night. Over the next seven days, if you give a monthly donation, that amount annualized will be matched dollar for dollar. And so uh, if you give 10 bucks a month, that's $120. The 120 will be matched dollar for dollar. Also consider a one-time gift. You'll see that option as well. Just click on the button. You'll see the different options. You know what you can give. There's no a pressure. We can't come through your computer screen to make you <laughs> donate to 40 Days for Life. And so take it to prayer. See if you can give us a donation. Some of you may be able to give a gift of $20,000 or $10,000 or $500 or $10. Whatever it is, uh, do it before April the 17th and it'll be matched uh, dollar for dollar uh, up to that amount on the screen. And so we have one week to hit that. And I encourage you uh, to do just that because it helps and it has been an investment that has certainly grown the last 11 years as we have seen God use this simple effort in the United States and around the world to save lives and to close abortion facilities at the local level. If you would like to mail a check, you see the form. Uh, there's just a, a link. Click that PDF form and you can print it off. In order to have your gift matched, it needs to be mailed, postmarked, by April 17th. So if you want to mail it in, you can do that. It just needs to be postmarked by April 17th to uh, hit the match. And so thank you as we've seen the donations come in uh, tonight, just as we've been uh, on this webinar. So thank you to those of you who have given. And just thank you for being part of this effort to end abortion where you live. Never imagined 11 years ago that this is the plan that God would have uh, as 40 Days for Life has grown. Uh, but too much is given, much is expected. And it is a tremendous responsibility on our end to make 40 Days for Life campaigns better, to make our leaders better, to get new leaders where we need new uh, campaigns and to invest more in our in-person regional workshops when we've been doing, in our national symposium, in providing new signs and resources and tools for our leaders, something we've done in the past year that we've never done before, in giving them tangible help on the front lines and then visiting them, which we've spent a lot of time doing the last 11 years uh, on the sidewalks. And so a thank you for all that you are doing where you live, and we can't wait to see the results as we open up applications for the fall campaign on June the 1st. It's just six weeks away. We will open up applications and get ready for what we expect to be the largest fall 
40 Days for Life campaign ever. And so with that, I will ask uh, Lourdes to close us in prayer. Our Father, what's how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We will send out the recording of this webinar uh, tomorrow. Be sure to share. Uh, it with your friends, share it on social media, and more importantly, uh, as Lord has said beautifully, pray for our leaders and pray for those discerning whether they are called to lead a 40 Days for Life campaign. They are the true heroes of this effort, and our focus has been on them and will continue to be on them. So pray for them, pray for our families. We will keep you in prayer, and we look forward to seeing God save more babies and close more abortion facilities. God bless you and good night.